Hi guys and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, hi, my name is Brittany. I am a nurse practitioner that currently has been working at Urgent Care for a year. And before that, I was a ER nurse for four years. I make a lot of educational content on here for you guys that is free. I love to learn, I love to teach. Also a lot of boards prep material. And then I kind of transitioned and I do other stuff too, like obviously working at Urgent Care as a nurse practitioner, and then just some personal stuff on here as well that I share. I love YouTube, so if you are new, then welcome. If you are a returning subscriber, then thank you so much for joining joining me. I appreciate you guys so much. I really can't even put into words how uh, special like this community has become to me. Um, sometimes it feels like it's just like a safe place to sit down and talk and share how things are going, which is funny because I would never have thought I would feel like anything on the internet was a safe space. But this channel, it's small and everyone has been so kind. So I love it. But if you want to join our community, then definitely welcome. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about some, well, one thing in particular that happened recently that really kind of just like put me in a funk. So I had my first uh, negative review and I'm not going to share it on here, um, but I imagine that if you did enough research, you might be able to find it. It was quite lengthy and did use my name in particular. Yeah. So reading, uh, reading it was extremely disheartening to say the least. Um, I've had a lot of good reviews and so that is really, really sweet. It makes me feel like, okay, there's a reason why I'm doing this. But one negative review made me feel angry and sad and just, I don't know, not a good feeling. So a couple things about the review. I'm not going to like share again, like I said, exactly what was said. But I did want to kind of talk about working in healthcare and sometimes feeling like a punching bag. Um, and I don't want to be dramatic, but like a lot of people on here are, they also work in healthcare, whether as a nurse or a student or as a nurse practitioner. And honestly, sometimes, you know, it really can feel like you are a punching bag working in healthcare. Working uh, as a nurse in the emergency room, that was something that we, were just very accustomed to. It was a daily thing where patients would verbally or physically abuse the staff, you know, whether it be mental health or, I don't know. I feel like it's always gotta be a component of mental health if anyone is verbally or physically abusing healthcare. But that being said, and you would become pretty desensitized to it. And I found myself even desensitized, especially not so much physical abuse, cause that really, I had a couple of things in the ER that would definitely classify as physically abusive, but a lot of verbally abusive stuff. And some of it would really hurt me. And then some of it would definitely, some of it, I would just forget it and just put it away and not think twice about it. And I just feel like it's such an unhealthy environment when working in those types of situations and having to just ignore like verbal abuse. I understand that, you know, people are in not their best places, whether they're being, whether they're ill or their family member is ill. I understand that it's stressful and I understand that the healthcare system is extremely broken and a lot of times we're very understaffed or we don't have the resources we need and so people are left waiting for longer than they would like to be. But working in the ER, that definitely took a toll on me. Sometimes, like I said, I was extremely desensitized and just went about my business. And then other times it would hurt me. There are some things that were said to me working in the ear that were very hurtful. Um, and maybe I'll share some stuff now that I'm out of nursing in the emergency room. I'm sure many of you also have your own stories because it does seem to be pretty accepted that healthcare should just take the ab abuse, I suppose is the best way that I could put it. It's, a, it's largely in part due to the fact that of course, medicine is so heavily focused on customer service and, you know, always pleasing the patient and getting those good press gainy scores, those good Google reviews or whatever, whatever that means, whether it be not necessarily following best practice medicine or, and I'll kind of elaborate more. So in the ER, typically people were upset about wait times, not getting what they want in general. That was pretty much it. Like that's that's the two like general themes. It doesn't change in the urgent care. It's the same. 
uh, it's wait times and it's not getting what they want. And it's frustrating because, well, the wait times, so for example, in my office, sometimes patients will be waiting for hours in the waiting room. And so though they we have nine, we have nine rooms in our urgent care, um, we rent out space to specialty providers. So cardiologists is there, uh, I've told you guys this before, general surgery. And then we also share with primary care. And there's usually at least two primary care providers there on the weekdays, sometimes upwards of four or five even. And so we all have to share this space. And so people that come to the urgent care are waiting in the waiting room and they see people that are going ahead of them. And I'm sure it's a little bit of a communication issue and not letting the patients know like, hey, I know you see people going ahead of you, but this is because they are actually primary care and they have an established appointment, whereas you are a walk-in urgent care and it's we can't make the space. And like, of course, in the ER, we'll put them in the hallway and whatnot, but in the urgent care, it's not that type of setting. Like they have to have a room, although I did have to use the x-ray room yesterday for seeing a patient. So, I mean, we do come up with some workarounds to get more patients in there. So waiting time is a big one. A lot of times, and by the time that they get back to see you, they are already upset because they've been waiting for hours and they feel like crap. Totally get that, I hear you, but it's also out of the control generally of anyone that you're yelling at. It's usually someone above the people that you're yelling at. You know, like when instead of like you yell at the waiter and it's like the chef, like it's like when you yell at your nurse or your nurse practitioner or whatever, um, I don't have control over the wait times. You know, and that goes to say for a majority of us, like we don't have control. We are so many people, you know, and we have so much space and there are so many patients. And so we take verbal abuse because of that and it's frustrating. Okay, so waiting time is definitely a big part of why patients get so upset. And the other one is that they aren't getting what they want. I feel like that's maybe not the best way to put it because I'm not trying to sound mean about it, but it's just like, that's a general way to say it. Whether it be they're not getting pain medication, they're not getting to be admit to, admitted to the hospital, uh, they're not getting antibiotics, uh, whatever. It's just they came there or they have a, a desire, a want, and they think that they should be able to get what they want. And so I get hung up on this a lot because especially, oh my God, with antibiotics. If I were to really quickly say that I was getting burned out working in urgent care, it would be because of antibiotics and oh my God. <laughs> But so definitely in the urgent care, that's a lot of why patients get upset is because they come there and they have diagnosed themselves and they want antibiotic. And it just frustrates me because I try and be very, very patient. And I usually, what I, and I, what I told you guys too, and what I do with patients is I'll present to them all the indications for bacterial infection, all what would be indicated and what what symptoms we would be looking for that would indicate that you need antibiotics for a bacterial infection versus a viral infection. There are a lot of patients that are very receptive to that and they just wanted to like hear it from somebody and explain it. they're happy with just conservative management. But there is another 50% of the population that no matter what you say, they one day of symptoms, no fever, you know, no, uh, no immunocompromised, healthy people, no matter what you say, you talk about the side effects and like possibly C. diff or just other GI, like antibiotics are really hard on your gut. Like I hate taking antibiotics, but so like you go through all these and, and there's this sect of people that no matter what you say, they, I want the antibiotic. And it, it's just then it gets frustrating because especially working in like a private practice like the urgent this urgent care you know we have lots of reviews that get, are given out then we're in this situation like do you give them the antibiotic because you know they're they're you know basically they're demanding it regardless of anything that you tell them or do you stand your ground i guess and just decline and say you know and obviously in the most professional way that you can but mind you you can remain professional but Patients get, will get very upset. I've seen it. I've been there. And I don't want to argue with anybody. And I don't want a negative review. I don't want my boss to think I'm like affecting um, 
their revenue because people are going to come back because they couldn't come in and get their antibiotic. And so, but I also really want to be a good provider and pr practice medicine accurately and have good antibiotic stewardship because we need antibiotics to be effective. Like you can't just eat antibiotics every month. Like you are going to build up resistance and then we have local resistance and we lose our antibiotics. And it's very serious. I mean, if you go back in time before we had antibiotic medication, I mean, we were really dying off very young. I mean, I know you guys know this, but like I try and explain this with patients that are like just return patients that come every month or every couple months requesting antibiotics. I mean, it's really kind of common. So I get frustrated. And I try not to let the patients see my frustration because I'm trying to be professional. And then, so then I've been told, well, document, like, just make sure you document it. You know, you discuss all the possible side effects. You discuss all the reasons why it's likely viral. Patient demanded antibiotic is still given. I talked to one physician assistant that said he actually won't give it if it's not indicated point blank period. And but vast majority of people that I've talked to said, well, they kind of give in and just document. But it's, what is, what's the point? Then I'm starting to question, like, why did I go to school for six years? Like, why have, why did I choose to gain any kind of expertise in anything when at the end of my, end of my visit with a patient, regardless of what medicine says and what I've studied and what my purpose of being there in my role, regardless, then we just kind of ultimately do what the patient says to get positive reviews and basically money of course it always comes down to money that's just kind of where i've been thinking about and honestly i know some people can just like they recognize it but they're really kind of just able to brush it off and sometimes like i said i can and sometimes it really frustrates me i get those feelings of burnout and i start wondering about other specialties or fields where i could feel a little bit more valued and i was like and then i'm also putting you know, my skills and my education to a better use. Because a lot of times working in the urgent care, I can kind of feel just like a antibiotic dispenser. I don't know. People will literally come to me and say, Hey, I have this sinus infection. I get it every six months or every year. It started last night with nasal congestion. I want to get the antibiotic in me now before it gets worse. That sentence right there, I can't tell you how many times I hear it a day. And I get tired of explaining it, but I do it. But I, there's a large group of people that doesn't give a crap what I say. And so then I start to feel defeated. Like, what's the point? And I hope that this isn't taken the wrong way. I hope that you can relate and, or maybe you can't, but at least you don't judge me because I'm not trying to sound uh, mean at all. Like I'm not, it just gets tiring. And so I have, so I had this bad Google review and it was kind of related to similar around, along those lines of antibiotic or wait time. Both com were actually components. Um, but then there was some other stuff in there too. My issue is with the other stuff. She entirely fabricated a large part of her Google review. I find it not fair that somebody could go on to such a large platform like Google and put my name down and write whatever isn't like the end of the world. Like if it were so horrible, horrible, I would have a bigger issue with it. But instead the, the parts that are completely a lie are not that big of a deal, but still I know because I was there, it's frustrating when I have to just kind of accept that. So anyway, so those Google review, right? I actually reached out to my boss because I was upset about it. And I said, this is the situation, this is false. To be truthful, it was never even my patient. I ended up getting mixed into something, but it was still my name. And I was upset because I felt like it, I feel like it's like defamation of character. I don't feel like it's right that you can put my name on something like that and make up lies about me. I feel frustrated about it. Unfortunately, I was told though, that the only person that can actually take the Google review down would be the patient themselves and that they would follow up with the patient actually the mother of the patient. So now I'm just kind of hoping that this mother of the patient will be more honest and take the Google review down. Has anyone ever 
experienced negative review. I mean, I'm sure many of you have, or maybe not. That was my first, and I don't want any more. So then I'm like, I have this in my mind. Well, you just got to do what they want, Brittany, because God forbid somebody else goes on there and writes a negative Google review about you. I take my job very seriously. I really, really do care. And majority of patients that have been with me would vouch for that. And the people that I work for know who I am, but I just don't, but I'm not a punching bag. And I don't think anyone working in this field should have to be, uh, regardless of anything. Like you shouldn't have to be verbally abused. It's yeah. So I've had a little mm. couple of days after this review and I know I shouldn't take it to heart and I know I should focus on all of the positive encounters that I have. And it's unfortunate that one negative review would make me feel this way. But it's just like a stark reminder of why I felt burnt out in the ER. And yeah, I don't know. I'm sure there's plenty of you that can relate. I think that's why I wanted to come out here and talk. I know a lot of you can relate and are in similar positions as me or have been or will be. And so I don't feel like I'll be judged. It's hard to explain to people that don't work in healthcare. So I just wanted to talk to you guys about that. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've ever had a negative review uh, and what you felt about that. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. It means a ton to me and I love watching the numbers grow and the community grow. So don't forget to do those things for me. I really appreciate it. And until next time, wish you nothing but the best and we'll talk soon. Bye.